the changes and the reasons for the change. We have to, I have to have a complete explanation. <laughs> if we don't pass this, we're going to have to have another meeting. I'm fine with that. I want to make sure we're doing this right. I do too. We all need to be well, cognizant of that. Yes. Okay. So, okay, we're going to Okay. Oye, oye. <laughs> I'd like to call the meeting of the Shields Township Board to order. Um, we have a couple of people who are missing momentarily. Charles January is on his way, and Linnell Collins is also on her way. But um, since she could not, she had a pressing responsibility at work that she had to attend to, and she's a little bit late tonight. So, for the purpose of starting the meeting almost on time, uh, I'd like a motion, please, to nominate David Barkhausen as deputy clerk. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, and thank you, David, for taking yeah. this mm -hmm. uh, responsibility. We appreciate it very much. Glad to be back, if okay. only briefly. <laughs> okay. Um, we need a roll call. Trustee Brown? Present. Uh, Trustee Gashgarian? Present. Trustee Kerr? Present. Supervisor Maloney? Present. Uh, can we all please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, okay, our first agenda item is a motion to approve the minutes from our March 19th meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? I'll move that they be approved. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The minutes have been approved as offered. Um, okay, uh, the next item is an action item, a motion to approve the authorization to execute an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement by and between Lake Bluff Park District Lake Bluff District 65 and Shields Township for the maintenance of the traffic light at Foster and Waukegan Road in Lake Bluff. Um, we are in the process of approving the uh, the original agreement as uh, I think everyone knows at our last meeting the original agreement was um, allowed to lapse by every and no one really noticed that it had lapsed and so we have an amendment to the agreement to um, continue it it's in the hands of this our one? yes it's in the hands of our new mm. attorney a soon to be new attorney and um, we need some uh, advice and counsel on that but uh, what I'm asking the board to do is to please uh, give me authorization to execute that uh, amendment uh, given uh, assuming that we will get uh, approval from our attorney and you all have a copy of the amendment and have had a chance to review it mm -hmm. so uh, does anyone want to make that motion I'll make that motion that we approve the authorization for execution. Second. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Do we need a voice vote or can we just say aye? Uh, because I think it would be. Since we're spending we'll money. Call yeah. Because it's an That's what I thought. Yes, yeah. okay. All um, right, so. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gasgarian? Aye. Trustee Kerr? Aye. Supervisor Maloney? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. All right, our next action item is a motion to approve the appointment of Brian Winter of the firm Fuqua, Winter, and Stiles as the attorney for Shields Township. Um, Mr. Winter is here. would like to introduce him. He's sitting in the front row. You want to stand up and say hello? Or? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, as has been mentioned, my name is Brian Winter. I uh, currently uh, serve as the village attorney for Gurney and Kildare. I've been the village attorney going on 11 years at uh, Gurney, uh, about seven at Kildare. We also represent some other units of government and uh, uh, really excited to have the opportunity to serve uh, the township. Um, basically, uh, we have been involved in all aspects of local government and uh, so this is uh, well suited for the type of work our firm does. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so I need a motion, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Moved by Gushkarian, seconded by Brown to appoint Brian Winter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call? Roll call. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, <laughs> Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gashgarian? Aye. Trustee Kerr? Aye. Supervisor Maloney? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, the <coughs> next action item is a motion to approve our bills. And I'm looking for a motion to approve the bills for the town fund. In the amount of $55,217.30. Do you mind repeating that figure again? Sure. $55,217.30. Are there any questions or concerns about the bills, or may we have a motion to approve them? I motion we approve the town fund expenses in the amount of $55,217.30. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's moved by Kerr and seconded by Gashkarian. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gashkarian? <coughs> Aye. Trustee Kerr? Aye. Supervisor Maloney? Aye. Next is the road and bridge expenses in the amount of $10,741.56. May I please have a motion to approve those expenses? I'll make that motion. Thank you. And second. Okay, moved by Gashkarian and seconded by Brown. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gashkarian? Aye. Trustee Kerr? Aye. Supervisor Maloney? Aye. And then uh, general assistance expenses in the amount of $1,680. Uh, there is a spike in that, and mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, there's a thousand dollar bill for our annual cost for the software program that we mm -hmm. use to manage general assistance and emergency assistance. So that is a one-time expense, and that's why that is seemingly out of out of line with our prior months. Yes, so we have a total of sixteen hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, may I please have a motion to approve those expenses? I'll make that motion. I will second that. Moved by Gashgarian, seconded by Kerr, for general assistance expenses <coughs> in the amount of sixteen eighty. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Gashgarian. Aye. Trustee Kerr. Aye. Supervisor Maloney. Aye. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is a motion to approve the budgets for the road and bridge supervisors and assessors' offices for the fiscal year 2015-2016. The budget has been available for review for months, <laughs> and um, we're looking forward to the super. We could do this. Uh, let's see. Let's do the supervisor's budget first. I can find my supervisor's budget. It's in this pile here somewhere. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, our, for the supervisor's office for fiscal year 2015-2016, we have a proposed ex, uh, income of approximately, we never know, but our, our property tax levy is $656,000. Um, and our gross income is projected at $701,060. Our supervisor's expenses are projected for the year at $474,387, which is a slight reduction from the prior year, which, uh, you know, about $22,000 less than last year. So uh, does anyone have want to discuss that or any, have any questions about it, trustees? Mm -hmm. Want to vote on it? I'll make that motion to approve. Thank you. Anybody want to second it? I'll second that. Okay. It's just um, Yes, if you'd like to ask okay, a question. Not other supervisors. I have one other question. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to pass the... Trustee Brown. Yeah. Aye. Trustee Gashgarian. Aye. Trustee Kerr. Aye. And Supervisor Malone. Aye. Um... Do you have a copy of the assessor? The assessor's budget for fiscal year 2015, we have um, a proposed budget number of $318,194. Mm -hmm. And I would like, please, uh, a motion to approve that number. So moved. Okay, and I need a second. I'll second that. 
Okay, thank you. Moved, moved by Brown, seconded by Gashkarian to approve the assessor's budget in the amount of $318,194. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gashkarian? Aye. Trustee Kerr? Aye. Supervisor Maloney? Aye. Okay, thank you. And now, <coughs> the road and bridge budget. I have to find a new one. Right here. Okay, thanks. All right, um, I, the trust, the road and bridge budget was discussed at the meeting and in the intervening time between the meeting and two days ago, uh, there were some clarifications and changes of minor nature of changes. And uh, we uh, have talked to the attorney since this was available 48 hours in advance of this meeting. We can approve these expenses. Um, I would, however, like to ask you, Mr. Uh, if you could tell us um, what sure. what the changes are and, and why. Uh, well, remember, I made the original budget in November. Right. And Which since was then, since we're running a little late now uh, in approving the budget, I got the exact number for the property tax from the uh, county. So. I modified that top number. Right. And then the rest of them we went through at our meeting and we discussed a couple things. For instance, I took out the uh, <coughs> amount for okay. traffic signal maintenance. Uh, right. Because that's going to become a town to fund uh, expense. Yes. And, and we, we, I made some notes on the budget when we met a couple weeks ago and I just modified approximately according to those lines. Okay, well, <coughs> there are some, though, that are higher than they were before, and I just wondered, uh, are those based on getting more accurate estimates? Well, yeah, or? the other thing I did was, since we have finished our budget year for last year, I went through and put the actuals in instead of a forecast, mm -hmm. and then I adjusted based on last year's actual. Okay, so the difference is um, the gross profit on the original budget that was proposed was 295 586 total income and uh, the new budget shows a total income of three hundred and eight thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars our total expense on the original budget was five hundred thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars the new budget number is five hundred and thirty four thousand seven hundred dollars so it's a difference of about thirty four thousand dollars over the entire budget Right, I put all that extra money substantially into the uh, paving fund. Okay, good. All right. Line items. Okay, so are there any questions um, from the trustees, first of all, about this budget? Okay, here's my question. So the budget that we went over in the actual budget hearing showed the total expenses at about half a million. Now we're being given, two days ago, a different one that nearly exceeds or it is about a thirty-four thousand dollar difference right, based talked. on an income of three hundred and eight. So we're seeing a difference or a discrepancy here of two hundred and twenty-six thousand. Where's that money coming from? Uh, that's coming from the savings. That's so that is coming from reserves. Yes. Okay, and that money is being taken out to pave the roads. I see, right? And that's why that that there was a we huge jump 000. in road maintenance to three hundred thousand. Yes. Correct. Okay. My other question is, is accounting not services. To pave the roads, just to pay approximately a mile that will get us. Uh, accounting services jumped up to 7,000. I know in the last meeting, what, who? I just rounded all of them because it was easier for me to think about it. It was 68, 20 or something before, and I just rounded it to rounded seven. It. Okay. Now, I know that, um, okay, now this is my other question. Staff salaries, why are they so high? $100,000? Uh, well, last year That's we were 5000 Okay, what, what's gone up $15,000? I don't know if anything will go up, but that just gives us the opportunity to do things that become necessary. Like what? All the stuff that we do. Like what? Put up signs, pick up brush, patch roads, put culverts They got in. culverts. Well, in the past, though, how many employees has the, the, the Road and Bridge Department actually employed using these kinds of monies? In the past, yeah. uh, last year? 
I don't suppose we had up to six or seven people working at different times. And, as, and does anyone else find that a little high or no? Is that, does that seem excessive to have in a road? Does anyone have any comment on that? Because I've asked, I've called around, I've asked, I've asked other road and bridge departments. Um, I know in the past, with our past two road commissioners, we had a grand total of three employees at a time, two of whom were considered full-time and one was considered seasonal. And when I do the bills every month, I can see that we have a rotating staff, sometimes as high as 10 people on board. So I'm just curious. I can go back through my notes and I will find that. So this is why I'm questioning, and I, and I don't understand why nobody else is questioning this along with me. Maybe somebody in the audience can help me out with this. Well, I, I can answer that. Go Please ahead. do. Uh, basically, we have one full-time person. It's the same one that's been around about 20 years. Mm -hmm. Instead of two full-time people? I don't know that there we've ever had two. Full-time people. Well, I don't know that we've ever had two. Well, in, the, in the recent past, I don't think. The road commissioner two. always worked on the road with the one full-time mm -hmm. And then... Uh, that was the full-time. That was well, the other full-time person. I'm in the middle of explaining it. And then we have other people work various times, you know, to help pick up brush and dig the culverts and, and haul the, the dirt away and that sort of thing. And that takes more than one person. And those people are hired on a on a, an as-needed basis. That's right. And there are no expenses for them in terms of right. Does this no anything sort of other than their that? direct salary. No IMRF or anything like that. Right. So there, it's a very efficient way of doing it. And if we hired it out, we'd have to use prevailing wage rates for the work, and it would mm -hmm. be tremendously expensive. And the money for these salaries comes out of where? Out of the staff salaries. Right. But this money could then essentially go elsewhere, too, if, if uh, we did not but have we as many employees on staff. The, if we didn't do any of the work, we could mm -hmm. have all that. I just, I, all I'm questioning is why we've had, in the past two years, so many people. Approximately fifty-five, $60,000 of the staff salary staff. last year was one full-time guy. Mm -hmm. The balance of them is the remaining, you know, 25 or 30. Mm -hmm. So it's really insignificant in the giant scheme of things. Well, I, I can't say I agree with you on that. Okay. I guess that's your prerogative. Yes. Okay, so now um, we now. have one comment from the audience. Anyone else? Just just Mr. Rogers? You, you know, you can just sit. Yeah, it is yeah. okay if I just stand. Thank yeah. you for your time. I just have a couple questions. And, um, I, uh, your total revenues are actually $300,000, right? Uh, well, again, I'm rounding for yeah, 308. Yeah. 308. So basically, a third of the money that comes in. Is being used for staff approximately but we, I don't think we have historically ever achieved that number so. well my, my here's my concern because I've done the job you talk about brush cleanup that's one day a month we don't even do it that often anymore. okay so that's negligible as far as needing other staff road signage I, I don't get it I, I mean I did it with Rob for four years look, look, just let me finish and, and then please just so I understand what you're doing Scott because I have a vested investment in this community, and the roads are, are absolutely deplorable. And, and I, I Excuse look at this me, and I sir. See, I, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just saying, just I please am. keep your I am. comments to this point. But I, I think he would agree the roads are in terrible shape. Correct? Right. Okay. So I'm not. This is not directed person. So you got almost a hundred thousand dollars in in salary where, where Rob can handle most sure of the basic I needs. I I, I don't. An extra fifteen thousand dollars is significant to me. I'm also curious as to what happened that the workman's comp jumped from twenty six hundred to a double almost. Your your work comp went from twenty six hundred actual last year to a projected fifty eight hundred. Actual last year was fifty two thirty five ninety. In this it says twenty six eighty seven. Actual. That's that's twenty thirteen twenty fourteen. Okay. Last year is the first column. Okay, so okay. two thirty-five ninety. That's uh, completely <coughs> based on the amount of money that's paid. Okay, um, I'm also curious in, in the road signage, and, and it's a concern. Was there not a mandate that the signage in the unincorporated area had to be brought to re reflectivity standards? I uh, think by now that mandate has been rescinded. It has. It has. Okay, thank you for clarification on that, because um, I was concerned about that because I was not, a big nonetheless. Deal. We intend to you know keep most of them fairly reflective. Well, I thought there was a mandate that there you was, had. but they stopped yeah. it because it's uh, unattainable for most municipalities, okay. including okay. us. <laughs> okay, and, and you've done a ton of tree removal. You've got another 8,000 in tree removal? 
Yeah, I, I, that's what I expect we'll have this year. It should be less than last year. Last year was 10. Okay, and, and how far are you drawing the reserves down? You're using approximately... We have about, we have over 400,000 in reserves. Because you're drawing them down by about half? About half, yeah. All right, again, that's just concerning because of <coughs> the condition of the roads. I, well, that's why I'm drawing it down, though, to fix the condition of the roads. Understood, but I mean, as far as replenishing it somewhere down the line, and since you're drawing it down, and again, obviously I haven't been involved in it. I've only spoken to Congressman Dole, but I've spoken briefly to, to Julie Morrison and others. You know, anything that's out there from, from CDBG grants to um, uh, stormwater management grants or whatever, you're using that money. If you could use it as matching money for anything else that would be out there, you, you know. Yeah, we'll, we're going to do a, a stormwater grant this year. Okay, um, I just can, so yep. thank you for, for clarifying some of those things, mm -hmm. but I'm really concerned that there's so many people working when there's really, it's, it's really what Rob can do. It's, it's 15,000 that can go on the roads. I mean, I, I drive them, you drive them. They're in horrible, horrible shape. Okay. Not duty, but they're in horrible shape. Yeah, it, it, it is more thank than you. one person. Thank you oh, very okay. much. Oh, we'll have other public comment for other issues. Yeah, it's on the yes, agenda. it's on the agenda. Thank you You're very much, now, this was extra public comment. Thank you. Okay. So I, I want to add just to this point and to this issue, and and, and not specific to uh, uh, any one department, but all of them, that the previous board had reduced salaries of part-time elected officials, the supervisor, the highway commissioner, as well as the assessor's office. And there was much made of the significant percentage of reductions in those salaries. The concern that this board is now seeing as relates to those salaries and the purported or what is now appearing to be illusory savings with respect to the reduction in those salaries is that there seems to be additional spending additional budget items mm -hmm. and then increased costs with part-time employees whether it's bringing on people to do budgets in the assessor's office or, or adding on people and I understand the explanation that you provided but it's simply an observation that we're making that mm -hmm. whereas at one point there was this purported savings uh, by virtue of uh, heroic measures made by the previous board and reducing salaries and then you turn and it becomes all very illusory when we're adding employees whether they're part-time or bringing in consultants to do mm -hmm. budgets whereas previously the budgets were done by the department heads and I'll, I'll further I, add I, I did this budget and I, and I understand that uh, and, and because you were present at the budget meeting and we did discuss it thoroughly at the budget meeting so I again I'm not specifically referencing you Scott I'm talking more broadly so there is a concern that when we begin to hire on people or subcontract out jobs that all of those savings that were were, were so uh, highly touted are, are really gone and that's where I think the concerns that Heather has spoken to and I have to concur and articulate in that that's why we're watching that's why we're asking the questions so that we have a better understanding in terms of the projected budgets I appreciate you asking those too but the, the difference is we're now actually doing a lot of work we're putting in we're, we're fixing the drainage system we're fixing the landscaping after we do the drainage repairs uh, which is necessitating pavement patching ash trees have died uh, make no mistake I'm not I diminishing mean, your work there is a fair amount of work that has to be done and it can't be done by one person and again no make no, what anyone says make no mistake I, I don't I don't intend to minimize or diminish the work that is being performed it's good okay um, thank you very much things cost more that's the thing that's the well, law of actually, government they cost a lot less now. well they are that's because true we have saved a lot very cheap labor yes now. yes but there's more to do <laughs> but anyway um, so what I'd like is a motion please to approve the revised road and bridge budget which is the one that shows income it's the April 20th one that's not this one it's this one no it this says one. revised on it right on the top. right there thank you I'd like a motion please to approve the uh, 2015 2016 Shields Township Highway Department budget which reflects a total income of projected $308,322 <coughs> and total expenses in the amount of $534,700 and the deficiency between the income and the expense is going to be coming from reserves for the purposes of repairing uh, roads, some of the roads. A mile. 
Do I have a motion, please, to approve this amended budget? So moved. Thank you. A second? I will second it. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Gashgarian? Aye. Trustee Kerr? Mr. Barkhausen, could you please note that I will eye this with extreme reservation simply because I don't feel that this was provided to us with enough time, nor were we given uh, adequate explanation. And Supervisor Moore. Thank you. Aye. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. All right. Mine. That's so yours. the no. next, maybe it is. The next uh, item on the agenda is okay. public comment. Does anyone have public comment? Hi, Dan Rogers, 610 Adelphi Avenue, Lake Bluff, Illinois, or Nolwood. Um, as everybody who lives around here notices the fine construction going on on 176, which is making everybody's life more enjoyable on a daily basis, uh, <laughs> what it is doing is it's forcing, not forcing, it's electing for traffic to go through our community, through our neighborhood, on roads that are already in tough shape. Um, I'm curious if you're doing anything and if you're not, I would respectfully ask if you would, um, as soon as possible, get a hold of the county sheriff, ask for extra patrol, buy extra patrol, do whatever you can for not only the safety and the, and the wearing on the roads, but the safety of the kids that are now out on bicycles, riding around. People are traveling at a very high rate of speed through our community. They're cutting through my parking lot on 176, through scooters, down Thorn Tree. They're trying to find any way possible to get through the neighborhood uh, as quickly as possible to get around the construction. That I get. What I don't want to see is one of the kids on bikes getting run over. And I've seen fairly large trucks coming through the community which are tearing up roads, um, something fierce. So um, if you have, thank you. If you haven't, um, please get on the county. I have called the county because they're cutting through my private property, but it carries a lot more weight when it's coming from elected officials. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. Scott, before you respond, yeah. could I ask a very quick question that dovetails on that? Yeah. Do you have any idea, are they giving you a timeline or a timetable? Yes. It's supposed to be done before... Uh, the snow flies? No, before <laughs> Target opens. Which mm -hmm. is? At the end of June. Oh. So it's only going to be another couple months. But yes, I have talked to the county and I will call them again to get extra patrols out here. There isn't really much else we can do. We can't close the road, so... I have a question. Is there any remediation that we can get from Target or from the county or from anybody to help repair the damage that the roads are incurring? I suppose if we were in Lake Bluff, we might, but uh, we have no, no hold over them at all other than we maybe could ask for some money. Why don't we ask? We can ask. If you don't ask, you don't get it. Is, is there a process that our attorney is aware of that, no, that might? No, no. no. We have the responsibility for public roads. and. Uh, uh, I already asked about this a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, no. If it's if it's new no. development with its, within your jurisdiction, mm -hmm. it part of an annexation agreement, you can work yeah, out yeah. agreements, you know, for improvements or anticipated mm -hmm. cost uh, with construction. But at, at this late stage, it would be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Even then, it was. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, we, yeah, we, we would never answer. Right. Right. So okay. That opportunity. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay. Thank you. Dave? Hi, Dave. David Fontana, 701 West Woodland, Lake Bluff. The thing that Dan said I had asked him before, because my twin daughters, my 11-year-olds, ride around the block on their bike, and people are cutting down the door tree to the dead end, making a left, and as they're heading towards Waukegan, they see four cars in line by the McDonald's, so then they cut down, you yep. know, was it, Birch or Northern to, to Woodland, and both of them have almost been hit already. Oh. Is there a way we can get a temporary sign on a, on, a, on a horse that says no through traffic's residents only? Something that tells them you can't cut through anymore because they are flying through there. Mm -hmm. And just coming up, as I was coming home, I called Dan. He said, he's, I'm sitting in the meeting now, come now, that I mm -hmm. saw people do it. And they almost hit my daughter on my way home tonight. So I definitely don't want that to happen. Maybe there's something he can do. The other comment I have, when we had that storm the other day where it all flooded, mm -hmm. I was sitting out on my street, moving the leaves so the water can go. I told Rob about where all the problems is on Woodland. Then he told me your plan on digging up a lot of the yards and putting a trench in. 
12 years ago, I had the permission of the road commissioner to put a French drain in. He was there when I dug it. He was there when I put it there. I spent 6000 The water's flowing th good through mine. I want to make sure it's not going to be torn up or the Shields Township's going to owe me that money because I had the permission of the road commissioner at the time and he inspected it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure mine's not going to be tore up because it flows fine. It's the house that doesn't have a culvert that causes most of it. Right, yeah, your, your, your culvert does flow, however, it is an eight inch. And right, everything else. But it so never backs up. Well, but it, it does. Upstream. But I had the permission uh, of the I, road I, commissioner and he was there to inspect right, it. Rob, Rob told me that. We'll, we'll look into that. I'll, I'll get a whole mm -hmm. plan done on that. We'll decide what we're going to do on okay. that later. I'm just saying, I paid for it myself. Everybody thought that the, the Shields Township did work. I paid for it out of my own money and I did all the work myself. Okay. So, uh, in regard to the cut through traffic, I suppose we could put up a sign, but it's completely unenforceable. Uh, the cops won't write tickets for it. They can. They what won't. if they just I used to be a policeman. They can write they, that they, ticket. They probably can, but they have to follow someone until they go through. If, you're very, if they see one squad car there, they'll not cut through anymore. That's maybe he true. But I, we're not going to get a cop here 24 hours a day. But no. Yes, I, I didn't have that. Come back. High they're traffic here. times, morning they're traffic, traffic late night traffic. Right, they're okay. out here every day. One hour, so. two hours a day. It, it, it is a ticketable offense, Scott. It's it is a ticketable offense. It's avoiding the traffic control and lights. Exactly. But in order for them to ticket it, they have to actually follow you. They have to see you turn on the road, and they have to see you go through and not pull into a driveway. Right. So they have to follow every single car no. uh, in order to enforce it. Actually, what they have to do is when the car goes by them, they can punch in their computer the plate real quick and in five seconds have where that person lives and then you know they're cutting through. Right. Yeah. You don't. Okay. That's, how the, that's how the computers you know and the squad Gentlemen, work. can they're we... They're not going to do that. Excuse me. You, 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 you didn't even get Gentlemen. That's why they You're out of order. That's why they told me they Please. couldn't... You're, you've sat Please, down. We're asking too. I know. To I'm just saying that we will. He will look into it, and we will get. Well, I yes, he will. And he's. And, and in order to ticket them for doing that, they have to follow the cars through, and they essentially won't do that. Scott, with all due respect, no. the squad considered the end of offer of. So we're not even talking about the safety of children. It's a valid complaint. Yeah, so I have two children in that neighborhood myself. I'm not. No. Look. Look. The problem with decorum both yeah, we have a decorum and rules, and please, you guys got your chance to speak, and it will be addressed, and please follow, we will follow up with you later. All right? Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else who would like to make a public comment? Yes. Oh, hi. hi my name is Larry McCotter, 1014 Foster, in Lake Bluff. No one. And I am speaking on behalf of Lake Bluff Open Lands Association and uh, pretty much to thank uh, the board for action taken at your last meeting uh, to uh, recognize the value and extend some protection to an area that's part of the township known as Lake Genevieve. Lake Genevieve is part of the Arden Shore North subdivision. It's uh, north on Green Bay and east on Bay Shore. At the uh, dead end of Bayshore uh, is what is now a beautiful uh, natural area with ancient oaks, a uh, little remnant wetland, and um, just a, a really unexpected pleasure. Uh, the attempt to obtain uh, this property on behalf of Shields Township followed uh, failed efforts by Lake Bluff Open Lands and Lake Bluff Park District. <coughs> and uh, at, at one point, uh, I, I think it was Dan Rogers who, uh, who uh, issued a citation, I think, to, the, to one or both of the two foundations who uh, were, were guilty of, of maintaining weeds, <laughs> uh, invasive weeds. And when the foundations realized that they were gonna have to start spending money uh, in defense of property that they couldn't care less about, uh, you know, often in Lake Bluff, they thought, well, why don't we just donate the, um, the property to the township? Do I have that right? <laughs> That's the way I remember it. Um, and uh, since that time, uh, the, the uh, property has benefited from just endless volunteer efforts on the part of George Martin and Bill Nardine, if I could acknowledge two Lake Bluff Open Land board members and mega volunteers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As 
as well as a succession of road commissioners, including Mr. Rogers, Bill Goodman, and Mr. Anderson. And on behalf of Lake Bluff Open Lands and the people of the township, we thank you for your collective efforts. Uh, the, the Lake Genevieve has been clear of just millions of, of buckthorn, honeysuckle, and other invasive species, many of which have been hauled off by the, the, the staff, including Rob. And uh, it's just, if you haven't been there, you certainly need to take a look. We all know what the before picture of buckthorn looks like. Uh, <coughs> Sandy Morton and I were just talking about, well, what does it look like before you do your restoration? You really can't see it because it's just this wall. You've all got buckthorn. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, here is a picture of late 1990s before restoration. And you can, on your own time, come up and take a look at the transition. I want especially to point out two, uh, two vegetative indicators of really high quality oak woodland. And they are <coughs> green dragon, white trillium, and shooting star. Uh, these guys. Actually, that's red trillium there, as well as wild geranium. We've got a profusion of really valuable woodland wildflowers, and it, this is just such a gem, I think, for the township. And we just want to thank you for it. And, and for the resolution that was passed at the last meeting, I think we could look forward, um, if, if, if there is consensus on the board, to further protection of somehow, how can we protect this permanently? How can we make it so that Lake Genevieve it remains valuable open space for the township. But uh, we thank uh, the citizens of the township and the board and uh, encourage you to go out and visit Lake Jenner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks. Okay, is there any further public comment tonight? All right. Thank you very much. We're ready for township reports. The trustees, any trustee have a report, please? Okay, uh, Mr. Anderson. Well, we had that one fairly significant rain. It wasn't anything like last year's rain. And uh, in preparation for that, we started cleaning out all the culverts and some of the ditches. And then we continued that after the rain because we didn't get it all done. Uh, we patched all the roads and we have done our spring brush pickup. Uh, and we obviously converted all the snow trucks back into regular work trucks. And fix some things with pros because there's nothing else. That's great. Okay, um, do, do you have a report? The assessor's report. Just wanted to say that, um, you know, it's a quad year and the staff has been very busy reassessing all the property values and they've covered North Chicago, all the unincorporated areas, and they're working their way north, south into Lake Forest and are um, completing now working on the. Uh, and the terraces in the Lake Bluff right now. They're doing a great job. Um, just wanted to make one clarification on the comment about the accountant um, to the um, supervisor, or to my office, the assessor's office. Um, it's uh, by law, the responsibility of the budget is actually in the supervisor's budget. And I've never um, worked where we didn't have an accountant. So um, I, you know, I think we, all talked about it for over a year that we could use an accountant to make sure that we're doing our books appropriately. And um, of the accounting services that I used last year with the accountant that we had, I, I only talked to her for about two hours just to get some actual listings so that I could prepare the budget for this year. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, just on an unrelated right. matter, as a point of information, do you know when the tax bills are being mailed and when they will be landing in people's mailboxes? I don't mail tax bills. I understand I, that comes from the I know from they're, the county, um, they're putting them forth right now. So the, the blue slips on the assessors, the assessed value of your property, those get mailed out um, around the June time frame. So we don't close the books till May-ish, and it all depends on when everyone closes the books. So the books don't get closed down until probably mid-May and then they usually go out within a, a period of time after that. But I don't ex have that exact date now. 
but I know the tax bills, they just got uploaded into the systems this past week, and those aren't officially accurate yet because they still have to do all their numbers across the county before they make them fully accurate. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, You're Kathy. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome Alderman Bobby Allen. He's in our audience tonight. Hello. Thank you for coming to our meeting. He is an alderman in North Chicago. Yep. And um, we're, we're glad that you came, uh, dignitary in our audience. Um, I just want to briefly reread the resolution for the uh, Lake Genevieve. Uh, we, la at our annual meeting, passed this resolution for the establishment of permanent open space at Lake Genevieve in Arden Shores North, unincorporated Lake Bluff. Whereas Shields Township owns vacant land in Arden Shores, Shields Township, Lake County, Illinois, and Shields Township is in the process of being gifted an additional parcel contiguous to these lots, and you will receive that deed to look at soon, Mr. Winter. Whereas Lake Bluff Open Lands, Mr. Larry McCotter and Mr. George Morton and Mr. William Nordine, along with various volunteers and local students, have worked to improve this land by removing invasive species and replanting and seeding native plants and have removed diseased trees from the property on a voluntary basis without cost to taxpayers. And whereas the open space is not developable, being a designated wetland, and whereas the open space is a benefit to the community, serving as an outdoor classroom, a space to walk and find refreshment in nature, and a natural stormwater handling feature for the neighborhood, now be it resolved that the Lake Genevieve area of Shields Township will be identified as open space to serve as a nature preserve and shall remain undeveloped in the future. So we do have a resolution which we passed at our annual meeting, and that was it. And I just wanted to read it for the benefit of people who weren't at the annual meeting and ha haven't seen the recording of mm -mm. it. Thank you. Um, otherwise, everything's fine, and I think we got a lot of work done tonight. Mr. January, welcome to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you could make it. Thank do you, you so much. And yeah, do you have any anything no. to say? Just that. <laughs> He's usually on time. <laughs> Yes. No. Okay. Sorry. And uh, Linnell Collins, our clerk, is here. She arrived shortly after the meeting began, and she's taking notes in the back. And uh, thank you, Linnell. Thank you, everyone, for coming out, and thank you all who are going to watch this in the future. And uh, I'd like a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn this meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you so oh, much, everybody. Fire huh? greens.